Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 94, and as you can see, I am not in my normal recording location. I'm out of town for the weekend, but I did still want to get in a vlog this week because there's been a lot of stuff going on, obviously, in the world of hearing healthcare, specifically with this whole Medicare potentially covering hearing aids in the future. And if you guys saw my vlog from last week, you kind of heard me speculate on what this could mean overall for uh, audiology, and for you know, hearing treatment for individuals who have Medicare. And today I wanted to get more into the actual, what is written currently inside of this Build Back Better Act that regards including hearing aids as part of Medicare coverage. So this is not going to be as long as the video that I did a couple weeks ago where I was talking about the um, over-the-counter hearing aids. That was like a hundred and some page document that I had to read through and I made notes the entire way through. That video is about 45 minutes long. Go back and check that one out. I think it was like vlog number 92 or something like that. But uh, still, I think it was a, a really good vlog. If you ask me, there was a lot of information in there. And if you're interested in over-the-counter hearing aids, or what that ultimately means, I'd highly recommend going and checking that out. Fortunately, this Build Back Better Act, it is about 1,700 pages, but by no means that I read all 1,700 pages. I read the 10 pages that really encompassed everything about including hearing aids and hearing aid services as part of Medicare, and I made notes of all of the key points that I found in there. And I had to do a bit of research to figure out what some of the things actually meant. I had to go and constantly go back and forth between this document and the Social Security Act because a lot of this is mentioning amendments that need to be made to the Social Security Act to include hearing aid services and hearing aids themselves as a part of the Social Security Act, so a part of Medicare. So I want to kind of just start from the top and go right down. I will link this particular document in the description below. It, this is as of October 28th, 2021. So this could totally be amended since the, point that I, or the points that I'm talking about right now could completely change. Um, but I still think it's important to understand kind of where things are at right now. Um, I do suspect that there will be some minor changes, but at the end of the day, I think that this is going to be pretty close to what actually gets approved if everything does go through and get approved. The one little side note thing that's interesting is that originally this included vision and, um, and dental, but hearing is the only one left. It looks like those other two components for optometrists and for dentists was removed from the version that I'm looking at right now. Now, who knows what will, again, ultimately happen with that, uh, but we'll see. Now, right before I jump into this, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, especially if you like the location that I'm recording from, I do think that there's a little bit of an echo, so hopefully my recording here uh, takes away some of that echo for you guys. Uh, but nonetheless, without further ado, as Dr. Bryce Altis likes to say, uh, who's my other audiologist who works in my clinic, um, page 581. This is where the hearing aid and hearing services starts inside of this 1700 page document. So we have page 581, subtitle H, Medicare coverage of hearing services, providing coverage for hearing care under the Medicare program. Now line nine on this page says provision of audiology services by a qualified, or sorry, by qualified audiologists and qualified hearing aid professionals. So essentially what's happening here is that they are starting to, or they're going to include hearing instrument specialists as individuals who can provide these audiology services for Medicare. Now, if you know anything about how it currently works hearing instrument specialists are not included in, in Medicare. And so they cannot provide services under Medicare. And all of everyone who's received a free hearing test in order to get hearing aids, the reason that you get free hearing tests a lot of the times is because these hearing instrument specialists cannot charge for a hearing test 
because they are not included inside of Medicare. And if you have Medicare benefits, you are supposed to be able to use those benefits. So that's why you can never go see a hearing instrument specialist and pay for a hearing test. But that might actually change, of course, if they include hearing instrument specialists as part of Medicare. Now, I honestly think that that's a good thing. I think we're going to need hearing instrument specialists to be able to fulfill the demand of hearing aids, which uh, hopefully increases substantially if it's included as part of Medicare. Now, it also mentions that this is going to begin January 1st of 2024, which is a little over two years from now. So it's not like this is going to happen in 2022 right away for everyone to go and get hearing aids. Um, but it, you know, these things take time. And again, that's assuming that everything does go through uh, as we would expect it to go through. Now, page 583, payment for qualified hearing aid professionals. With respect to hearing assessment services, that will include hearing instrument specialists, which makes sense. The amounts paid shall equal to, uh, sorry, the amounts paid shall be equal to 80% of the lesser of the actual charge for such services or 85% of the amount for such services determined under the payment basis determined under section 1848. And what it's basically saying here is that it's no different than regular Medicare. Medicare covers 80%. There's a supplement usually that picks up the other 20% and um, they are going to be paying out at basically the same rate with this. So it's a relative formality of including that in here. When you go to line 17, uh, it says coverage of hearing aids. And so they have to have an amendment of the, social, of the Social Security Act to include hearing aids as a prosthetic device that is allowed under Medicare. So when you go to um, line 23, oh sorry, I should elaborate on that a little bit. So hearing aids have always been specifically excluded from uh, Medicare. So what happens here is that if they want hearing aids to be considered a prosthetic device that's going to be covered by Medicare, they actually have to amend the Social Security Act to change that, to say that. Okay, so that's what they're talking about there. And then when we go to line 23, this is something that's going to make some people upset. And again, we don't know if this is final or if this will be final, but two individuals diagnosed with profound or severe hearing loss. That's the first time I've ever heard it that way. Usually it's severe to profound, but profound or severe hearing loss. And that is going to exclude a lot of individuals from actually getting hearing aids. And you, hearing aids should be acquired long before a severe to profound level of hearing loss. Mild to moderate levels of hearing losses honestly should be treating their hearing loss uh, to prevent negative uh, other you know, effects down the road from having untreated hearing loss. But I won't get into that right now. Let's move on to page 584, payment limitations for hearing aids. This is something that this is, uh, this is crazy to me, but not surprising given that this is Medicare and this is how it typically works with Medicare. So line five says payment only on an assignment related basis. Now, a lot of people are like, well, what the heck does assignment related basis mean? So I wanted to kind of get a quote in here from a reputable source. So I went to Cornell School of Law to look up the, the definition of assignment related basis in regards to Medicare and it says, the claim submitted by a physician, supplier, or other person is paid on the basis of assignment, whereby the physician, supplier, or other person agrees to accept the Medicare payment as payment in full for the services furnished to the beneficiary and is precluded from charging the beneficiary more than the deductible and coinsurance based upon the approved Medicare fee amount. And I'll put that up here so you, uh, you guys could read along with that. But basically what this means is that whatever they come up with for how much a service would cost, that is the amount that the hearing care professional can bill to Medicare and, and that's what they'll have to accept as payment in full. So they can't charge any more than that. In fact, you can bill more than that, but you're only going to get paid whatever that allowed amount is. And just to give you an idea here, so a hypothetical scenario, if I were to charge, let's say, for detailed real ear measurement, $150, and Medicare only pays like $35 for real ear measurement, then I can submit a $150 bill to Medicare, and guess what they're gonna pay me? They're gonna pay me $35. 
So this creates a situation where everything potentially, depending on what those amounts are, could end up being a situation like it is with hearing tests. So if you wanna look at the true cost of a hearing test in different clinics, the cost of the hearing test needs to include the cost of all the equipment with depreciation and all of that, and the cost of the time to administer it and the time to review it. And Medicare will pay what, like 30, 30 to five bucks, somewhere around there uh, it, for that hearing test, but it probably true cost of doing all of that is in the hundreds of dollars when you really start to look at it, at least a hundred plus dollars in most cases if, if a review of that is going to actually happen. And so basically it has rendered hearing tests as being a, a losing service. So if I were to just provide hearing tests inside of my clinic all day long, we would just lose a ton of money every single time that we do the hearing test. Now I don't wanna to get too far off on a tangent, but you can see what's happening here in terms of uh, from the profession side of providing services to individuals. It comes down to, okay, well, if I don't do real ear measurement, then I'm not gonna spend all that time and I was only gonna recoup $35 from that anyway. So, you know, I'm just not gonna do it because it doesn't make sense financially for me to do so. So it could completely erode the whole aspect of quality of care through different services that are provided, but that is a story for a different day. And I did speculate some on that in the previous video. So I'm not sure how this will affect hearing aid technology pricing. So let's say that Medicare has an allowed amount of $1,000 per hearing aid and that covers low tier technology. Well, what would happen is in some cases of insurance is that you're like, oh, well, I wanna use my hearing aid benefit and I'll just pay the difference between whatever that technology level is and the top tier technology if that's what you want. And then you would basically sign a form inside that clinic saying that you understand that you're just gonna pay the difference it will get submitted to Medicare. Medicare will only pay the thousand dollars and then, or that insurance will only pay the thousand dollars and then you just pay whatever that difference is. But, but I'm not sure that they're going to even allow that. So you may actually have to just accept whatever hearing aid is ultimately covered by Medicare if there's no ability to do like balanced billing is what we would call that. All right, as we go to line 13 on this same page, it says limitations for hearing aids. And this is where it's talking about how often you can actually get hearing aids. And it basically says that you can get one hearing aid per ear over a five year period. So after five years goes by, you then again become eligible to uh, be able to submit to Medicare to get new hearing aids. I think that's realistic. I typically tell my patients every five to seven years is when they should be considering uh, technology changes. They don't have to, but that's usually around the time frame where we see significant changes in technology to the point where you would experience a significant uh, improvement in your hearing ability. Now, it goes on to say that, and this is only for hearing aids that are not over the counter. So you could not actually get over the counter hearing aids paid for by Medicare. You would be paying out of pocket for that, which in my opinion, makes me believe that over the counter hearing aids will actually cost more than what it would cost an individual to get their hearing aids from Medicare. Um, but nonetheless, over the counter hearing aids are not intended to treat severe to profound hearing loss levels anyway. Now line 24 says only if furnished pursuant to a written order by a physician, qualified audiologist, qualified hearing aid professional, physician assistant, nurse practitioner, or clinical nurse specialist. Now one just kind of silly critique here is that it's funny that they say qualified audiologist and qualified hearing aid professional, but they don't put qualified physician, qualified physician assistant, qualified nurse practitioner, or qualified nurse, clinical nurse specialist. Um, which just seems silly to me. I mean, the individuals who understand hearing loss the most are the hearing instrument specialists and the audiologists, and to see that they need to qualify those professions by saying qualified just seems rather silly, uh, and maybe they're just making fun of us, who knows, who cares. Um, but what, what it's saying here is that you, if you don't have a referral for, from one of these professionals, then Medicare will not cover hearing aids. So it's very similar to how hearing tests are right now. You have to have a physician essentially do a written order for a hearing test saying this patient needs a hearing test and only when we have that written order can we submit that to Medicare and have Medicare pay it. Otherwise the patient has to pay for the hearing test out of pocket. 
Now, when we go to page 587, line four, exclusion modification of the Social Security Act, line six says, amend by inserting except such hearing aids or examinations, therefore as described in and otherwise allowed under section 1861S8. So this means that hearing aids will no longer be excluded by Medicare. And then when you go on to line 10, it says inclusion as accepted medical treatment where it goes on to say in line 18, consisting of items or services described in section 1823 that are payable under part B. So basically here is that hearing aids are now accepted as a medical treatment inside of the Social Security Act, so for Medicare. And, you know, the, just so you guys know, historically, hearing aids have always been excluded. I may have mentioned that earlier, but this essentially would switch things to where hearing aids are now included in this. Now, give me a second here. All right. So page 588, clarifying coverage of audiology, audiology services as physician's services. So line five says that audiology services are now included in section 1861 of the Social Security Act. Line seven says inclusion of qualified audiologists and qualified hearing care professionals as RHC, which stands for Rural, Rural Health Clinics, and FQHC, which stands for Federally Qualified Health Centers. Um, basically, this is uh, language that, that says that these audiology services are included as part of these rural programs that they have for Medicare. So uh, not something that necessarily I have a huge understanding of, but if you're someone who lives in a very rural place, you might have an understanding of how the, the provision of services and care in that type of a uh, clinical setting uh, can be different than what it is if you go to like a larger city. But I'll go ahead and move on from that for now. Page 589, line 21 says temporary payment rates based on PFS, which is physician fee schedule for certain services. The secretary shall in establishing payment rates for audiology services that are federally qualified health center services under the protective payment system, uh, sorry, prospective payment system established under this subsection in lieu of the rates otherwise applicable, applicable under such system, base such rates on rates payable for services under the payment basis established. So, okay, so this is just getting really wordy. Basically what this is saying is that they'll have to create a temporary fees, fee schedule until they determine what the permanent fee schedule is going to be for these audiology services. So, you know, this stuff is happening really, really quickly. Of course, they will have some time to determine what the fee schedule will ultimately be. Um, ugh, I'm just that I'm fearing what the fee schedule is going to be because I look at what we need to charge right now in order to at least have break even or better to have some profit inside of our clinic. And if they end up taking all of these uh, fee schedule amounts for all of these different audiology services and making them below our break even mark, then I have no idea what we're going to do. That'll be interesting. Now, when it goes to page 590, this is basically closing it out here for this entire section of hearing aids included as part of Medicare. Page 590, line 14 talks about implementation, and this is where it talks about the money that's going to be allocated to being able to do this where it says $370 million to remain available until expended for purposes of implementing the amendments made in this section during the period beginning January 1st, 2022 and ending on September 30th, 2031. And so most likely meaning that there's a certain amount of money allocated for hearing aids and audiology services over the course of this time period. And after September 30th, 2031, who knows, they might have to add more money in if all the money's gone. Who, I just don't know how they go about making sure that this money is going to last that long. Honestly, that doesn't seem like a whole lot of money to me to be able to cover all of this when you think of it starts getting implemented in 2020, 
24 all the way up to 2031. You're, you're looking at roughly, what, seven years worth of coverage that needs to happen for $370 million. Now, given that it's only gonna be available to individuals with severe to profound hearing loss, that probably will um, cover that amount of time. And then when you also think of it from the term of the, uh, in terms of the fee schedule, they will probably make the decision on what certain uh, things are going to pay out as based on how much money they have to actually do it. So. You know, we'll see what happens if and when that money gets exhausted over the course of that time period and then what they'll do going forward, because I imagine they'll have to agree to put more money into this particular program as the years go on. So it's not that big of a section when you really look at it. I don't know how long this video is right now, it's, but I, I, this is a very, it's very just a weird one to read because it's talking about all these amendments that need to happen inside of the Social Security Act. If you're interested in the Social Security Act, that one's really tough to read. It's, it's huge. Um, but they'll give you the different sections that they're talking about when they're talking about amendments that you can go and actually Google them and they'll come right up. You can go and search and, and see what they're talking about and what they're actually amending there. But again, this is not the final draft of this, most likely. Most likely it will change. Again, who knows if this will even end up passing. My gut tells me is, is that it's just a matter of time before it does, uh, but we'll, we'll ultimately, when that rolls out, we'll discuss that in further detail. So that is really it for this week's video, guys. Uh, if you did like this video, if you're in support of uh, Medicare providing coverage for hearing aids and audiology services. Go ahead and leave a thumbs up on this video, but you know, I'm going to go start enjoying my weekend now. So take care guys. And as always, I'll see you next week.